now proceed to provide our assessment of growth and inflation. Let me first focus on growth. India's real gross domestic product, that is real GDP, recorded a growth of 7.2% in 2022-23, stronger than the earlier estimate of 7%. It has surpassed its pre-pandemic level by 10.1%. Real GDP growth in the fourth quarter of 22-23 accelerated to 6.1% year-on-year from 4.5% in the third quarter of last year, aided by fixed investment and higher net exports. On the supply side, real gross value added, that is GVA, accelerated from 4.7% in Q3 to 6.5% in Q4, driven by rebound in manufacturing activity, which moved into expansion territory after two quarters of contraction. Turning to 23-24, domestic demand conditions remain supportive of growth on the back of improving household consumption and investment activity. Urban demand remains resilient with indicators such as passenger vehicle sales, domestic air passenger traffic, and credit cards outstanding posting double-digit expansion on year-on-year -year basis in the month of April. Rural demand is also on a revival path. Motorcycle and three-wheeler sales increased at a robust pace year-on-year -year in April, while tractor sales remained subdued. Growth in steel consumption and cement output and production and imports of capital goods suggest continued buoyancy in investment activity. On the back of double-digit growth of 15.6% in non-food bank credit, the flow of resources to commercial sector in the current year, that is 2023-24, up to May 19th, increased to 2.7 lakh crore from 1 lakh crore during the same period last year. Fixed investment by manufacturing companies expanded in 22-23, reversing the contraction seen in 21-22. Our surveys also point towards higher investment intentions of manufacturing companies for 23-24, that is for the current year. The contraction in merchandise imports outpaced that of merchandise exports in April, resulting in a narrowing of trade deficit. Coupled with sustained and strong growth in services exports, the drag from net exports on growth is easing. On the supply side, the eight core industries output expanded by 3.5% year-on-year in April, compared with 3.6% in the month of March. The Purchasing Managers Index, that is PMI for manufacturing, exhibited sustained expansion, rising to 58.7 in the month of May, which is a 31-month high. Available high-frequency indicators suggest that services sector activity has remained on an accelerating trajectory. PMI services remained in strong expansion at 61.2 on top of 62 in April. Looking ahead, higher rubby crop production, expected normal monsoon, continued buoyancy in services, and softening inflation should support household consumption. On the other hand, given the healthy twin balance sheets of banks and corporates, supply chain normalization, and declining uncertainty, conditions are now favorable for the capex cycle to gain momentum. Robust government capital expenditure is also expected to nurture investment and manufacturing activity. Consumer and business outlook surveys display continued optimism. The headwinds from weak external demand, volatility in global financial markets, protracted geopolitical tensions, and intensity of El Nino impact, however, pose downside risks to the outlook. So 
so far as growth is concerned. Taking all these factors into consideration, the GDP, the real GDP growth for 2023-24, that is for the current year, is projected at 6.5% with Q1 at 8%, Q2 at 6.5%, Q3 at 6% and Q4 at 5.7% with risks evenly balanced. Let me just give the figure once, figures once again. So the GDP growth, real GDP growth projection for the current year 23-24, uh, uh, the projection that we are making is 6.5% and the quarterly breakup is as follows. The first quarter, the estimate is that it would be 8%, second quarter, 6.5%, third quarter 6% and fourth quarter 5.7% and the risks are evenly balanced.